the insiders are the insiders because they work behind the scenes, help orchestrate what happens in everything from making policy to making election victories and suffering election defeats. All our insiders have been there, done that. But this week, one of them's special. Kathleen's here in Toronto. Jamie is in Vancouver. And the man with the grin, Dave, <laughs> who was campaign manager for Kathleen Wynne's win in Ontario last week. So I don't know what you guys do when you Just get a round to, of applause, yeah, round yeah, of applause. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of secret handshakes or whatever. But I mean, I mean Jamie, say something about uh, David's role, because this was no easy campaign. Well, one has to assume when you look at, at going in, what the situation was, that uh, they should have been in serious trouble, but they end up winning a majority. That's right. And uh, Peter, that's because David, and I'm going to embarrass him a little bit, I think was not only strategically brilliant, but he was also brilliantly entrepreneurial. And it's very seldom that one campaign leader is good at both. So not only did he have a good strategy going into that campaign, one of the things a campaign manager, campaign chair has to do is decide to when to move off and when to be entrepreneurial and take advantage of something that happens and not lose strategic coherence. David was able to do both. And of course, what he pounced on was uh, Tim Hudak's promise to cut 100,000 jobs. So he prosecuted his campaign, his strategy, which was very clever from the beginning, to go and fish in a pond where there was enough fish where he could win. And then when the opportunity came, he took advantage of it. A and a lot of people do that, but they, t they chase every little piece of tinfoil rolling down the street. He didn't do that, and that's why he got a spectacular result, and he earns every single bit of it. He's seriously embarrassed, but we're going to let Good. Kathleen load a little more on <laughs> well, him Well, just, just quickly, um, you know, there were moments in the spring where I thought, oh, David, maybe you could have taken on an easier campaign, and maybe we didn't want you to run this one, because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out for you, but it was fantastic, and, you know, you deserve congratulations. It was hard fought and well played. Well, thank you both very much. It's very kind. It's uh, one of those times when it all comes together. We've all been on both sides of them. Yeah, well, uh, as you were in 06. On the other side of a somewhat similar situation, the incumbent, new prime minister, relatively new, uh, but dragging with him a scandal from the past. And a police investigation. <laughs> One of my friends, John Webster, said to me, if you see this scenario often enough, you're bound to get good at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, aside from the lesson that uh, David is, uh, still knows how to win, what, what was the major lesson learned out of that campaign last week? Um, Kathleen, you start. Well, I'm going to break the rules and, and do a couple rapid fire off the top and, and tell you that obviously I think it proves once again that campaigns do matter how you run them. Controlling the, the ballot box question is incredibly important and you did that well. Um, also voter efficiency in terms of where David put his troops on the ground to concentrate his wins. All of those things are obvious lessons from this election. But what I like to point out is actually what was most significant is there were a half million uh, new voters, if you will, uh, in Ontario um, in this past election. 500,000 more voters. And those votes all went to progressive parties. They went to Liberals, the NDP, and the Greens. And so there's lots to be learned here at the federal level mm -hmm. that if the federal opposition parties can chart a path to victory by bringing in and engaging new voters, they could actually um, win government. One of them could win government in 2015. So that's what I'm looking at. Jamie? I think uh, it proves that uh, although I don't think he was right on a lot of things, Jack Layton was right when he said hope trumps fear. And I think David proved that hope trumps fear. And uh, that, I think, is a very important lesson uh, in Canada's biggest uh, province and in indicating where the voters are and where they, they want to go. David? I think that the biggest lesson for me out of this whole thing was just how important and decisive uh, leadership is and the attraction of leadership. I don't mean this to sound unfair to anybody, but from the time that Kathleen Wynne was selected, she was so evidently the person that most people wanted to be premier, the person that most people thought was the safest choice in an uncertain environment, the person that people thought would provide strong leadership to the province, that Hudak never, I never saw an opportunity where Hudak would beat her. There may be some, on the insiders, we talk about all the strategic machinations that you do. And some of those things may have made the difference between a minority liberal government and a majority liberal government. But ultimately, people decide who they trust, who they have confidence in, who makes them comfortable. And if you don't have that, had I been in the other campaign, not sure what I would have done to have a more successful result when they, than they had. In the sense that, 
the leadership question is so decisive. And if you don't have a candidate that people want to vote for, it's very tough to work around that. Mm. The only option and you've got is try and knock down the credibility of that candidate. That's right. And nobody was successful in knocking down her credibility. credibility. Yeah. Mm. Jamie, no, you wanted to say let, something? Yeah, Sorry, let, 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 let's just name the other thing that we, ha we haven't talked about. And I think it's actually uh, a wonderful that we haven't talked about, but we actually elected uh, a gay woman, a lesbian, as Premier with nary a whimper or uh, uh, any commentary on it. And I, I just think that's such a breakthrough for, uh, for the province and for the country as a whole. It was a wonderful night, whatever your partisanship was. Mm -hmm. And another really hopeful sign or optimistic sign, I would say, is that after the last number of campaigns, certainly at the federal level and I guess also at the provincial level too we've seen a lot of political marketing niche marketing parties trying to carve off parts of the demographic the voting demographic with little trinkets and little shiny baubles in terms of their policy messages what we saw with the campaign that the liberal government ran was actually big government you know government being involved in your life having a role in the public life and Ontarians clearly embraced that I've now, always thought... But, but the problem, the, now the challenge is living up to that, right? now, and, and in the credit environment that we have, can she live up to the commitments and the high expectations that have been set? That, I think there's that's a zinger right. coming in here. No, it isn't a zinger. I, I, I'm just going to totally agree with what Kathleen says. I, I've always believed that that niche micro-targeting politics works if the campaign isn't about anything important. But if there's a big narrative, it swamps all of that micro-targeting stuff, and this campaign had a big narrative. All right, uh, the lessons for Ottawa, you kind of touched on it, uh, uh, Kathleen, for the federal parties as they get ready for an election a year and a half from now. Jamie, what's, uh, I've only got a couple of minutes here, what's the uh, major lesson for the federal parties out of what we witnessed? Well, I think the major lesson for the federal parties is that Ontario is a center, center left jurisdiction, and uh, it's going to be a challenge for the prime minister to tailor his policies in a way that keeps uh, faith with his base and yet gives the kind of opportunity and options to people in the 416905 where the Ontario Conservatives did so horribly and where he must do well in order to win and form a majority government. You had to look to rural Ontario, parts of the with 905, the 519, the NDP picked up there, the Liberals did well in the urban centres. What that means to me is that it's not a zero-sum game between um, progressive parties. Actually, they, they need both parties to be strong in order to take down Conservatives, and that's what happened in this election. Uh, you know, a hard right-wing agenda was taken down because the parties, you know, worked hard and got their ground game out. And as Jamie says, a hard right-wing agenda is not going to work in Ontario. No. No. David. Uh, that that's the lesson that that is the federal lesson which is that the market for economic complacency or austerity in Ontario is very very limited it's well less than 30 percent of the uh, of the electorate people think that the Ontario economy needs a boost and they want a growth <coughs> agenda and I think that the federal conservatives are going to have to speak to that or they'll suffer the same fate you know as, as often happens with an Ontario result there's always this debate about whether it's good or bad for whichever party may be sitting in in Ottawa at the time especially if the two areas Ottawa and Queen's Park are represented by different parties mm -hmm. so is this a good result or a bad result for Stephen Harper I got a minute David uh, it's a mixed result. Uh, it's a mixed result in the sense that there's lots of validation for the safe hands in an uncertain economic mm -hmm. environment. There's lots of validation for the power of incumbency, although in this case accompanied by a leadership change. Um, on the other hand, I think on several issues he's going to find a, a premier and a provincial government that are very aggressively taking issues to him that he's on the wrong side of, and I lead with pensions on that. Likely to be a difficult issue for him over the next year. Yeah, and terrifyingly, um, Harper could actually pick up David's plan and use it himself. I mean, his plan largely paints a path to victory for Harper in terms of incumbency. Jamie, you get the last word. Yeah, well, uh, Stephen Harper better hope that the ballot question next time is on the economy and jobs and uh, pe people's concern about their personal economic future. If it's not that, this, this election result paints him in big trouble. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Jamie, enjoy Vancouver. Hard Thanks, not Peter. to. Uh, <laughs> Kathleen and David here in... Uh, what do we start calling him, King David, or what? Yeah. <laughs> Please. You know. One week, one week only. <laughs> Thank you all. Summer break time is next for the insiders, but anytime things happen where we can be better off with their insight, we'll find them.